Good morning, dear friends and family. What a privilege to be able to speak to you from the Word of God. I want to speak about the topic, what you have in your hands. Do you know that God can take nothing and turn it into a weapon against the devil? We all know the story of the burning bush and Moses' uh, excuses before God. He has four excuses and God has four answers. First of all, when God told him to go and free his people from the slave bond of slavery, the, the bond of, of slavery in Egypt, uh, Moses said, who am I? Lord, who am I to go? God's answer was, it does not matter who you are. What matter is who am I and that I will be with you. Then I said, Lord, I, I don't know. I wouldn't know what to say. God's answer was, I will tell you. But Lord, they will not listen to me. God's answer was, I will work through you. They will see and they will believe. But Lord, I cannot speak well. I stutter. God said, I will speak through you. Maybe you have this similar excuses like Moses this morning. But God has similar answers for you. Moses was once a doubter. And in the beginning of his, in the beginning of his ministry, he was definitely, definitely nervous. But we are not going to focus on, on these excuses this morning. But I want to focus on a single question that God is asking Moses. And before we get to that, let's just read from Exodus 4, verse 2 to 4. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and he became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and he caught it and it became a rod in his hand. <clears throat> God asks, what do you have? Moses answers, just the stuff. It's nothing, just a piece of dead wood. So my dear friend, what is nothing to us is something to God. God used a piece of dead wood. A piece of dead wood to confront Pharaoh's wizards, to turn the waters of Egypt into blood, to bring frogs, a, a plague of frogs across the land, to cause a mosquito plague, to cause a, a, a thunder and hail all over the land, to cause a, a, a locust plague, to raise the waters of the Red Sea like a wall, to allow the bottom of the sea to dry up so that Israel could pass through and to bring the waters back on top of the, of, of, of the Egyptians. God used a simple rod to bring water from the rock at Horeb and to defeat Amalek's army. The rod itself was nothing. It was nothing special. It was just a dry stick. But it was what, what was important was that, that about the stick was that uh, it was all that Moses had. God did not ask Moses what he did not have. He asked him what he already had. You see how powerful this message is for you and me? Because like Moses, we are called to do great things. God has called you, ordained us for a time as this. Supernatural things. Things that are far greater than we can ever imagine or dream. Yet often we stare at what we do not have. I have no money. I have no degree. I do not have the right background. I only, if only I, I had this or I had that. Notice that God is not asking Moses to give something he did not already have. God asks Moses, what do you have? Moses, what is in your hand? I think we, we are all used to complaining about what we do not have. Therefore, we forget what we do have. Oh, I don't have enough money. I don't have a good education. I don't have a high social status. And the list can go on and you all know them. But God never draws our attention to what we don't have. But to what we have. Even if it seems like nothing to us. The key is availability. I must put what I have available for God. You see, could this rod have been used? 
if it only remained in Moses' hand. No. No, God told him, take that rod. Throw it on the ground. And the moment Moses did that, he was so surprised, he ran away. He didn't know he had such power. There was such power connected to that rod. Because he turned into a snake and God called him back and said, come, pick it up. And he took it by the tail and it became a rod again. You see, to be used, it had to be made available to God for his service. So when Moses placed his stuff in God's service, it became a powerful weapon. What made the, the, the difference? It was the power of God that made the difference. It's not your ability, your knowledge, your talents, or the excellence of your gifts. All that matters is how much of God is in your rod. Because your rod represents what you have. What you have surrendered to God. It may be your little, but with God it is more than enough. Your little will surprise you when you dedicate it to God's service. My dear friend, we must ask God to come into our, into our limited capacity. God in our song, God in our preaching, God in our marriages, God in our daily living, God in our gift, God in our talents, in our hobbies. Everything God becomes a part of is never, never the same again. Just ask Gideon hiding in a wine press, afraid of the enemy. But when he surrendered his strength to God, he defeated the Midianites with only 300 men. The moment God became evolved, Moses brought forth water from the rock with his staff, quenched the thirst of more than a million people. The moment God got involved, a donkey spoke and rebuked a rebellious prophet. An axe head floated on the water and saved the prophet from embarrassment. The moment God got involved, a small jar of oil multiplied to such an extent that the widow could not borrow enough jars to store all the oil. God's glory moved into a square wooden box. The people prospered and it was called the Ark of the Covenant. But you know what, my friend? God doesn't stay in the Ark anymore. He chose to live inside people. He deposited His presence and His glory in you and me. Acts 1 verse 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, We are like common clay jars that carry God's glorious treasure within so that the extraordinary overflow of power will be seen as God's and not ours. Your little is powerful. Your little is more than enough. It was only when Moses handed his stuff to God that God's power came into it. It's only when we surrender ourselves that His power can be expressed in and through us. My friend, God wants to give us something new, something better, something bigger. But you must be willing to give what you have to God. You see, Moses used the stuff of God to confront the powers of the world. Every time Moses was triumphant, he carried the south. He had it in his, heart, in his hand. After his encounter, before his encounter with God, it was just the staff. He always had it. It was not something new God gave him. He had it. He cut it from a tree when he started sheep farming or, or, or laboring for his father-in-law. And he walked with it every day. But after, after an encounter with God, after God touched it and changed it, it became useful. And God told Moses what he was going to do and how he would deliver Israel. But all Moses had to do, he had to stretch out the staff. You see, God... Just like Moses at the, at, the, at the fiery bush, God, God's word reveals his will to you and me. But that doesn't bring, doesn't bring the change. We still have to, have, have, have to speak God's word, stretch the stuff, and we have to give our abilities to God. 
Jesus said that we have the power to move mountains, but we must speak to the mountain. Speak. So every time Moses stretched out his staff, it was a kind of to speak the word from a believing heart. One of the biggest problems we have as believers is that we tend to underestimate what we have. I only have enough oil for, and flour for one loaf, says the widow of, of, of Zarephath. I only have a small jar of oil, says the widow, who has been plunged into debt and is in danger of losing her sons in bondage. Oh, we only have two fish and five loaves. It's not enough for the crowd. Oh, I only have a jawbone. When, when Samson uh, attacked, was attacked by the Philistines, he picked up, he found a jawbone of a donkey, a part of a donkey's skull, and he killed a, a thousand men with it. You see, all God needs is that you make what you have available to him. Put it in God's hands. When Moses, uh, when, when, when Samson picked up that jawbone, it became a, a, a weapon, a, an instrument of mass destruction. If we make ourselves and our gifts and talents available to God, God will take them and He will make it His. We just need to change our mindset. We just need to change the way we think. It's not my voice that I'm singing with. I've given it to God. It's His. It's not my voice that I'm preaching with. It's not my word. It's God's. It's not my hands that I work with. I've given it to God. It belongs to Him. Look what God has done with the stuff. What's in your hand this morning? Hear God's question to you this morning. What is in your hand? So often we feel we need extraordinary abilities to do God's work. In fact, we all already have everything we need to do God's work. No, I'm too old. No, I'm too, I'm too, too afraid. I'm too this, I'm too that. No, 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 no. We must just allow God to touch our lives and then to start using it. Give it over to Him. Open up your heart and say this morning, God, touch me. I want to ask you, my friend, again, what is in your hand? Is it your money? Is it your time? Your belongings? Your influence? A special God-given talent? If you're honest, the thing in your hand probably seems completely inadequate. However, you will be amazed at what can happen if you surrender it to the Lord. Samson killed a thousand Philistines with a jawbone. David defeated Goliath with one stone. Jesus used a young boy's lunch to feed more than 5,000 hungry people. Therefore, I want to urge you this morning, go ahead. Give to God what you have been holding on to. Because without God, what you have means nothing to you anyway. What you see as, as too little, as too small, Means nothing anyway. So just give it to God so He can multiply it. But God can make it useful. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you this morning for your word. Thank you, Lord, that when we give to you, you empower us to use what we give. Further your kingdom and to defeat the enemy. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May the Lord keep you and bless you.